In 1947, Jackie Robinson signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers, breaking Major League Baseball's color barrier. A lot was made about his signing, but no one ever asked the question, how did that color barrier start to begin with? The answer possibly lies with Moses Fleetwood Walker. And this is his story. Take me out to the show. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I ever come back, cause it's root, root, root for the home team. They don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, Moses three Fleetwood Walker was born in Mount Pleasant, Ohio on October 7th, 1857, just prior to the Civil War. The parents of a black father and a white mother. The family would later move to Steubenville, Ohio, where young Walker would become a star student, excelling academically in the black schools, and again after Steubenville integrated the school system. After taking some preparatory classes, he then attended Oberlin College, where he became hooked on baseball and was the star of the team playing as a catcher. He gained so much notoriety that the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, lured him away to play for them while he studied law. It was at Ann Arbor that Walker experienced his first moment of racial prejudice. During the summer of 1881, he signed with the White Sewing Machine Club based out of Cleveland to earn some extra money. After the team arrived in Louisville, Kentucky for a game, Walker was denied a hotel room and service at a restaurant because of the color of his skin. When the opposing team, called the Eclipse Club, saw him, they refused to play until he was taken off the game roster. After some debate between team owners, Walker was benched. Walker, by this time, had a reputation of being an outstanding player, and the crowd vehemently began calling for the white sewing machine to play him. It came to a point when the team owner for the Eclipse personally walked across the field and invited Walker to play. Walker really didn't want to play after the way he was being treated, but the crowd convinced him to take the field. When he did, he received a standing ovation while two players from the Eclipse walked off the field. The rest were protesting their owner, who again changed his mind, and again Walker was benched. It was reported that the crowd booed and hissed at the home team and began rooting for the visitors. Walker's not being in the lineup was blamed for the Cleveland club's loss. After graduating from college in 1883, Walker was contacted by a former sports writer, William Voltz, who is now a manager for the Toledo Blue Stockings of the Northwestern League. He eagerly accepted Volt's offer and agreed to play catcher, helping the team to a championship that year. It was during that season Walker first met Camp Anson of the Chicago White Stockings. Anson was leading a movement against using players of color. When Anson and his Chicago team had arrived in Toledo for an exhibition game against the Blue Stockings, Anson found out that Walker was on the team. He announced his team was not going to play as long as Walker was in the lineup. The move would have cost the White Stockings plenty. They would have traveled to Toledo, spent the night in a hotel, only to forfeit the game and return home with nothing to show for it. The game went on as scheduled, purposely playing Walker with the Blue Stockings losing. The following year, 1884, the team entered the American Association, making Walker the first ever African-American player signed to a professional team. Difficulties came not only from other teams, but from his own team as well. While opposing players tried to spike him every chance they had, the star pitcher for the Blue Stockings, Tony Mullane, admitted he would not take the signals Walker was giving him and threw whatever pitch he wanted. At this time, there were no protective equipment, not even gloves. As a result, Walker was injured most of the season or spent time in the outfield to rest minor injuries. At the end of 1884 season, Walker was released. He was heartbroken when he found that Camp Hansen, who was leading the movement to ban players of color, had convinced National League owners to agree with him. The American Association had followed the same path of the National League and also banned players of color. For the next several years, he would play with minor league teams on the East Coast. During an exhibition game against the New York Giants in 1889, Walker and another African-American player, George Stovey, attracted interest from the Giants coach, John Ward, who wanted to sign them. Camp Hansen of the White Stockings opposed the idea and used his influence in killing the deal. Moses Fleetwood Walker died in 1924 in Cleveland, Ohio, a bitter victim of unwritten agreements, but was willing to try to show those agreements as wrong and prove himself as a player and a man. These agreements would hold for the next 60 years until Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947 
and played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the show. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I ever come back, cause it's root, root, root for the home team. They don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game.